that you can use the planer to flatten the board. The problem with that is, if you come over here to our planer, the first thing that happens is there's a large pressure roller inside the planer. And what that does is it pushes down on the board very hard against the surface here, sends it through, the head takes off some material and then it comes out the other end. The thing is, if you send a board that's not flat through there, this roller is going to flatten it out, take off some material, and it's going to come out the other end an even thickness, but it's not going to be any flatter than when it went in. I can demonstrate this using this piece of uh, sandpaper, which you can see has a very distinct curl in it, and a rolling pin that acts like the pressure roller. If I run this through, like this, it flattens it out temporarily, but it's going to spring right back to where it was, and that's exactly what the wood does going through the planer. So it's very important if you're dealing with rough lumber that you have a jointer that is wide enough to handle the, the lumber that you have. So today we're going to use the jointer to flatten this piece of wood. You can see I can use the I can use the uh, table of the jointer to see what I've got going here, and clearly this board's got a lot of twist in it. And the way the jointer works is the outfeed table is set so it's exactly in line with the, with the blade, uh, the same level of, as, as the blade is on here. The infeed table is a little bit lower, and how much lower determines how much material we're going to take off. You can see from this picture here, the top of the blade is exactly where the outfeed table is, and the infeed table is a little bit lower. The amount of material that's taken off is determined by the height of the infeed table. So, we generally want to take no more than about a sixteenth of an inch off at a time. And that's just so that we're not overloading the jointers. Uh, larger jointers can take off a little bit more, smaller jointers a little bit less. And it depends on the hardness of the wood and so on. The other thing to know about using a jointer is, if there's a bow in the wood, we typically want the bow to be upwards. In other words, if I've got um, something exaggerated like this, um, and it's going this way on this side, like this one is, I don't want to run it with this side down. I want to run it like this, because it makes it much easier to run through the jointer. The other thing to remember is we want to, as quickly as possible, get the pressure on the piece of wood to the outfeed table, not on the infeed table. If I run this board the wrong way through here with the bow facing up and I keep all my pressure on the infeed table, what's going to happen is I'm going to run it through like this and it's going to come out looking exactly the same as it did going in. I'll demonstrate that.
So how does that help us when we get to our to flattening this piece? Well, as we can see, not flat. Um, we have a very similar situation to what I just showed. Um, if I run the board this way, I'm going to have that crown up, and I would have to be very careful about where I leave um, my pressure going uh, onto the outfeed table like this. So I want to try to find at least where any bow that I have is, is upward, and now I have to find a um, spot where I can push this thing where it's not going to rock on me. If this moves and rocks as it goes through, it'll be just like when I ran through the, um, with the crown going the wrong direction. I could very easily rock it and have it um, take off material in the wrong spots and come out looking the same way it went in. So it looks like if I hold my pressure here and here, um, I've got these two corners are touching, these two are up in the air. If I keep my uh, pressure points here, I'll start taking material off those points first until I eventually get down. Joint is just like an upside down hand plane. Um, it will, where the blade is, it will just start taking off material in the spots that are hitting the table. So as long as I'm not rocking this and I'm just hitting the points that I want, I'll end up with a flat board. Again, I want to set my depth. And the depth on this jointer is set by loosening this knob here. There's a lever down below here. And I can lift up and down on the infeed in table to determine how much I want to take off. And when I'm taking off just a small amount of material like I am right now, just in a couple points, I could get away with taking a deeper cut. But again, about a sixteenth of an inch is, is fine for what we're doing. <clears throat> and I can double check uh, fairly easily how much of a cut I'm taking here. <laughs> Now, 
one thing to remember when you're running this through is to keep is to keep your hand safely away from this blade. There's a there's a cutter guard here that helps um, as it goes through keeping your hand away. But the, the really important thing is that you resist the temptation. Sometimes when this is sticking a little bit, you want to push with the back, uh, push on the back with your fingers. But you can imagine as you come through the blade, your, your uh, fingers could very easily contact the blade. Uh, and that's a very common accident in the shop. So uh, you want to avoid that. If you really do need to push the back of the board, use a push stick like this. It's got a little hook on here. And it hooks on the end, but it doesn't go all the way down. So it's not going to be contacting the blade as it goes through. So it's pretty easy to tell when we've hit, and hit a uh, spot where we've taken all the, the rough stuff off of something like this and, and gotten to flat because it started out like this and you could see as we were going through that there was still some rough spots left and we knew we had to keep going. But what do you do if you have a situation like this where you've got a board that has already been flattened and brought to a thickness and this one is about 7 eighths of an inch. We flatten this several months ago, we brought it to 7 eighths of an inch because it was a critical part for some doors that we were making. And we wanted to make sure that this stayed very flat. So one strategy for that is to flatten it, bring it down to a thickness that's greater than what you need, let it sit for a while, which equalizes the moisture and allows it to uh, do any movement that it needs to. And then what we do is reflatten it again. But the problem is, it's sort of, there's, there's no clues for us to tell whether we've gotten it flat again or not. And we can see that we've, this, this board definitely moved over time. You can see that there's a gap here and it rocks. So we have to make sure, again, to find a, uh, some points that we can push on here to make sure that it doesn't move as we go through the jointer. But to help us tell whether we've gotten flat or not, I'm going to put some pencil marks on the bottom here so we can tell if we've gotten the whole thing. I'm going to just put marks all the way across. And notice I'm starting my pencil off the board and, and pulling it all the way across. So I go completely from side to side. What you don't want to do is go like this, because what if I wasn't hitting a spot out here, I wouldn't know it. And what I could end up with is a board that's got a little bit of a, a, a curve on it because I've flattened it here but not here and it's not perfectly flat. So this will help me know. The other problem I have on something rough like this, it does give me a pretty good grip that I can get on there with my hands and push it through. But often when I'm something through like this, it's very slippery and I don't have a good grip. So this is when I tend to, to use the push sticks a lot more. So I'm just going to run one pass through here so we can see what this looks like as it comes out the other side. So I need to put my pressure in here and back here on this particular board. <laughs> So that was pretty good. I got most of it in one pass, but you can see there's just a couple little pencil marks right along the edge here. And so I would probably want to run one more pass on here, but it's very possible I could be seeing marks that look more like I might have something like this that would be a little more pronounced. Um, and so I would want to run that through one more time. But it's mostly flat at this point, and I can move on and, and bring it down to its final thickness. All right. So we're ready to take our board and move over to the planer and bring it down to thickness.